All right, people, that's on you. All right. <clears throat> that ain't hip hop album review. Earl sweatshirt, some rap songs. Um, shit, it's been a minute since Earl dropped his last project that we reviewed. It was like two, three years now. B. Oh yeah, that's me. 2015, okay? <laughs> 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 Stop. See, that's why. <laughs> that's why. So since 2015, so three You know, it, what's interesting about this is 15 songs was only 25 minutes. Yeah. So the first go round, I was a little lost because these shits don't have no fucking hooks. Like it's just this motherfucker rapping with some weird ass beats. I just I didn't have no moment like oh shit like this is this is the shit. Like I always have moments like that on the albums that I love the most. And I was like okay this this motherfucker he rapping he sound good the beats is weird but you know he he's matching it you know every everything sounds cohesive. But I just didn't have that moment with Earl on this project. Because at first I didn't like it. And I'm glad that, you know, it took us a little bit to review it. So I could listen to it even more and more. And I'm like, damn, I do like this shit. But why do I like it? Like, what? And, and for me, it was mainly the production. I thought the production on this shit was just so different. And Earl just matched it perfect. So it, it's, it's not surprising that he did the production on this. Right, because just like when, when Cole does it, when Crit does it, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. kind of like they had that idea and they were able to get it out. And I get that from here, but I don't know. It's just like, it, he didn't have no standout lines to me. It's hard. It just, I just didn't have any standout moments with Earl on this. Like, you like this shit? I like this. You like this shit? <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like it. I just said I didn't have that special moment. Why are you asking that, boy? Because I don't see him putting this shit on ever in his entire existence on the rest of the on, on the rest of his life. I don't see I don't see Ralph putting this shit on and being like, yeah, here we go. Here we go. That's how I picture Ralph driving. Here we go. <laughs> what the hell? I could honestly say I probably won't be like, oh, I gotta listen to this album again. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely joints on here that, that I, I thoroughly enjoy. Shattered, uh, Shattered Dreams, uh, December 24th, On The Way, Mint, or The Mint, you know what I'm saying, The Last Joint Riot. I love this shit, man. This yeah. is, this is uh, like, like for for those that don't know, if you if you if you're not familiar with like producers like Knowledge, mm -hmm. producers like DiBiase, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like that really kind of like birth that lo-fi type of boom bap sound. Mm -hmm. Like this is it's amazing coming from Earl's last album. I don't like shit on God's side production wise. Mm -hmm. To him to make this type of stuff was just like cause I, and I'm and I'm be honest when I first heard the opening single Nowhere to Go. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't like how he was doing with that sample on that one. Um, the Mint, that was the next single. At first, I didn't like it, but in the in the context of the album, I was like, okay, yeah, this, this shit is this shit is good. Like, this shit was like butter. My only, I guess, negative critique on this album is it seemed like the mixing on some of these songs were like. I, I immediately thought Blue. Yeah, because Blue does that. So the I was like, oh, this is yeah. Right, because yeah. the mic was playing about that on that. So. I did. Yeah. So I was like, oh, he probably more than likely did that on purpose. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so. Yeah. The beat was overpowering his vocal. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like or too, like too much. The with the beat. Yeah, he did that on intentional. Yeah. Yeah. That was an accent. That's what it was. You said that wasn't an accent? No, no, no. No, that was intentional yeah. as fuck. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. Yeah. December 24th, which is produced by Denmark Bessie. That's another producer He's that. He's dope as fuck. Yeah, that's another producer. Mm -hmm. Rapper him. <laughs> yeah, rapper him. That's another producer that's like, when Earl, cause he he did, Earl produced it half of his album, um, mm -hmm. Denmar Vesey. So when I see Denmar Vesey produce this, I'm like, that's, I can see Earl get some type of inspiration from that type of sound. So when I heard this album, I was like, this is right up my fucking alley. Like I, I, I love everything production wise on this album. I'm like, Earl is on another level on this shit. Like I'm, I'm glad he tapped in. And he's been doing work with Knowledge too, a lot too. I was hoping, I yeah, he, I mean, I'm just saying like this on the side, he's been yeah. doing a lot of work with Knowledge. Okay. So yeah, overall, man, I was like, this dude, Earl, man, like, it's amazing how he can just make first these. Listen. Oh yeah, first, first listen. listen. Yeah, yeah, first listen. I was like, oh shit! Like the way he, the way he put that dream sample on the um, Shadow Dreams. I was like, holy shit! Like I think the second time I was like, damn, they really saying dreams. And then he flipped his own song on Redwater. Um, it's a track called uh, Soulless. He, he released back in 2015. Um, it's like a little series of instrumentals, but he flipped his own damn instrumental. And like made that shit a beat, so I thought that I thought I appreciate that joint. I was like, damn, that shit was dope as hell. Maybe I'm thinking too deep about this, but let me let me ask. Well, you know Michael Jordan too, but just you two. So mm -hmm. the magic he, he referenced magic, and then he also used 
the number 23. 23. Yeah. So you think those two were kind of kind of connected? Red Bulls, Jordan, oh, Magic. Oh, wow. Probably. It just kept sticking yeah. out. I was trying to make a you know connection, <laughs> but I was like, I don't know. I just figured I'll just ask y'all. He's still talking about serious things, you know, him drinking, his father passing away, which I think that was dope. He had him had his dad on one of them interludes reading his poems or whatever. I think I thought that was pretty dope. It's like listening to Earl, just he's just getting more mature, more mature. It's like, damn, his content is like heavy. He's still you can still he's still going through some dark shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like he going through some shit. Man, bro, when I put this on like, what Shatter hell? Dreams, I was like, okay, cool. Heard the knowledge thing. I was like, okay, this I can rock with this. And then the shit just kept going on and on and on. Yeah. I'm like, God. Dang it, Earl. And I was like, what is this? I heard those singles. I was like, I have no desire to hear this album. Damn. How many listens did it take before you? Who you talking to, Ken? I, I, I honestly don't even know. I just know it, it became more and more tolerable as, as it went on. And I started to just kind of listen more and more to him. And I'm like, Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. This this is not bad. And then it, it, then it was like, okay, this is kind of like, it really feels like it's it's Earl's mind state. But yeah, the first couple of listens, I was like, these really are just some rap songs. And when you've been gone for what, about two years now, three three, three years, three years so and and was. this is what you decide to put out, yeah. you know, totally up to you, your creative freedom, your right or whatever. But this is not what I wanted. Or what I was expecting when I when I played it, especially coming off the last album, and when I put this on, I was I was like I had no I, I didn't even want to listen to it after the first listen. I didn't even want to listen to this anymore. I was just like I, I, I can't do it. So what made it seem like not just some rap songs? What, at what point he was like okay, just the this, content, this, the just content the content, itself. the things he's talking about. I, I heard the twenty three magic line. I'm mm -hmm. like okay, so that's cool. The black woman line. I was like okay, that's kind of cool. Nowhere to go was cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just, it's just the way it kind of. Oh, I thought there was a line on veins that was that was a little, little alarming when he said, uh, you know, when I'm, when you guys bury, put me in the coffin. I can't quote it exactly, but I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. When you put me in the coffin and thank my mama or something like that, and I was like, whoa, that's kind of, you know, hey, what, what are you hey, trying to hey, say, hey, bro? Hey, <laughs> like, you know, so that was that was. You know, a little alarming. So it's so short. Like for me, like the first couple of times, and, and if y'all watch, like I, I don't like to look, look at the track list or nothing. Just let that shit ride. Let me see what I like. Let me see what I pull. And when it ended with Riot, I was like, damn, this instrumental dope. And then it just started over. Like to me, if you just let that shit loop, it, it, it does it, loop well. You, yeah. It loop. It yeah. loops right back to the beginning. Yeah, like does. damn, this shit's yeah. hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the head. That's exactly what I thought too. Which was dope, because yeah. I went right back to Shadow Dreams, so yeah. that was dope. I don't know how the fuck D put this on immediately and was like, all right, cool, yeah, Earl. I heard them singles, <laughs> I said, fuck out of here with this shit. And I even watched Fantano's video where he was talking about the first single. And I was like, bro, you got your motherfucking yeah, mind. Yeah, nowhere to go is horrible. You, done, you need to go out, no, nah, you need to go outside and, and get some air and come back and try again. So I was like, this is awful. He said he liked it. He loved it. And I was Ooh. like, I don't understand. I'm happy you like it, but I hate it. Then, of all people in the universe, Ryan Falcone texted me and was like, you heard this, Earl? And I was like, I mean, I, I got it downloaded, but I haven't listened to it yet. He's like, oh man, well, listen to it, let me know what you think. First listen, I was like, bro, this is awful. <laughs> this is fucking awful. But I didn't say anything yet. Mm -hmm. I put it on in the car and I gave it another shot. And it was just that second that second listen, it clicked. I think it, was, it just took getting over the fact that this is Earl. Because if it was another rapper, I think I would like it immediately. But the fact that it was Earl, I was like, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? It was mm -hmm. like, his flow has changed, his cadence is different, and his voice is lighter. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. But on that second listen, when you really start to pay attention, his rhyme patterns are the same. Like mm -hmm. Earl is still rapping the way Earl rapped before. Mm -hmm. It's just over a completely different backdrop. Mm -hmm. But now, I fucking love this album. I think it's incredible. Like I wasn't all in until I was able to read his lyrics. Cause then it made sense. Mm -hmm. Cause just hearing him, you don't really know what he's talking about. You'll catch but you got a here. sense though. You get a, you get a sense that he's talking about something though. Of course. After after some time. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. not as deep. No, no, no. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Like on Shattered Dreams, yeah. I think it was Shattered Dreams. You have to be like 
he can't just be just just black. Oh no, just, no, I knew he wasn't just yeah. rapping. Yeah. Yeah. I just but see, at first I did. First listen, I was like, damn, oh, why really? is he? Why is he? Yeah. Is, is this just a? At first listen, it just sounds like he's trying to just get some raps off. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he just got in the booth. He's like, no, I, I I got this on my mind. I just want to spit this stuff. It's gonna be. It, it sounds like the title of the album. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just in really? there. It does. Yeah, yeah, so even that the first, first song, it didn't. No, nothing jumped out. Like the nothing, first song yeah. basically sets you up. Like the. The the one line at the beginning mm -hmm. says, uh, "Piece of my dirty water drinker, don't nobody want to get clean." Yeah. Uh, why nobody tell me I was singing, and nobody tell me I could leave? Like yeah. it's all about his depression. Yeah. Right, First right, right, fucking right. song sets you up for the whole album, yeah. and it, it was like after I heard that line, I was like, "Okay, now I kind of get it." But it didn't 100% click until December 24th. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, track five, December 24th, yeah. where he said, um, "Bad Apple clashing with my kinfolk, bad acid did a." Uh, Oh, what is it? Bad it, acid. Bad did. acid did damage to my mental. Right. Show you right. It took some passions to get grown. They've been calling me savage from the get go. Obviously, you know what a bad apple is. So right. it's like if you think of him in context of everybody else in our future, who the fuck was like the the, the sore thumb, like yeah, the one right. that stood out the most? Right. Was Earl, Earl. because yeah. he was the darkest. The darkest he was the most melancholy. So if you look at it, he's like a bad apple. I don't know if he's really clashing. And he was the one that kind of left first too. Well, he, he, got, he got, got kicked out. Well, yeah, he yeah, got yeah. Got sent away. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. He got sent, sent away. Yeah, got sent away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But and when he came back, he was still hella different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. Tyler is still being this goofy whatever. Jasper and all other ones, and Earl is still this super serious dark morose one mm -hmm. and then when you think about the the bad acid did damage to my mental or whatever the line is this whole album like when you think about it it sounds like a bad acid trip and when you combine the bad acid trip with his because he said he was doing a lot of drugs yeah he was doing During, lean he was yeah. doing all kinds of shit yeah. mm -hmm. so if he really was doing a lot of acid like that shit leaves lasting effects mm -hmm. especially if you're doing bad acid yeah so that's what this album sounds like to me. It sounds like a really fucked up, bad acid trip. So those are those lines where it was like, the album makes sense now. Yeah. Before that, I was just like, I know he's rapping about something mm -hmm. like you, like you said. Yeah. I just don't know what. But right. after I was able to read it, I was like, all right, now I get it. And when he's talking about depression, because at first I was like, why the fuck are the songs only like a minute and a half mm -hmm. long? Mm -hmm. One's not even a full minute. I was like, I don't understand. Then when you think about like, what he's talking about and the whole like manic depression thing and the anxiety thing it's like that shit to me was on purpose it's like those things aren't always there it's not like you're always anxious it's not like you're always depressed it comes and it goes it comes and it goes so it's like i wonder if he composed this album as like a each one of these songs is like a different emotion mm. a different thought a different feeling that he's going through when he's having these manic episodes or these episodes of anxiety and that's why they're so short. I wonder what was the purpose of Red Water, like for him to how he had that. Purpose. Because he, it was it was the same suicide. eight it was the same yeah, yeah it was the same eight loop bar that he was rhyming the whole entire mm -hmm. song. Because That's, I mean yeah. cause, okay so, so I was wondering like when he mentioned his father I'm like okay what, was he just talking about him being depressed because his dad you know passed. He's away? probably in his head. You know yeah. like when you when you when something fucked up happens, mm -hmm. it's not like you think about something and then you move on to something else. You replay the same thought over and over, mm -hmm. especially when you know like when somebody passes, yeah. somebody close to you. Okay, so that you just keep thinking about the same things okay. over and over. And I maybe that's why he was rapping. Maybe yeah. that's why he he kept rapping that same. That's how bar. I took it. Mm, maybe. I feel like wow. when you that's when dope. you're able to like sit down and really think about the lyrics, I think the album comes together a lot better. Yeah. I feel like if you just put it on and try, try to ride out, that's why I was fucking with you because I know you don't sit down and read lyrics. So that's why I was. Well, well, well here's the thing though. Like, I have to read lyrics for shit like this. Because, oh, you do. Be, yeah, yeah. Because because then. I, because I'll be lost if I don't. Okay. If I just try to ride this shit in the car, I cool. Hell no. Nah. Like I, I was lost the first gotcha. two, three times when I wasn't looking at the track listing and nothing. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then I put it on the AirPods and I was going through because you know Apple Music. Thank, thankfully, he had the Your lyrics on there. Oh, they have lyrics on Apple Music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not, not, not everybody, but some people. But on this one, it did. So I was like, all right, let me go. Boom, boom, boom. And I started reading it. And I'm like, okay, but. It, but it's still, it, again, just like I said at the beginning, I still didn't have that whole wow, shit moment. moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I still didn't have that. I feel like it's just like that Danny Brown album, his last album, it's, it's, it's where he's trying exhibition. to make you, yeah, yeah. Atrocity yeah. Exhibition, yeah. where he's trying to make you feel, feel like that, what it's yep. like to be on a yep. bad drug trip. But I feel like he put it together better though. 
I don't. I do. I think think you think Earl put it together better? No, I thought I thought I thought Danny Brown put it together better. I don't think so, bro. I Earl, think these are on point. I think Earl these are both on, on on par. Cause yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. When you really, well, you never really fuck with people that do acid, or you never did anything like that. But when you're around people that are on acid, you can tell like what their mental state is. Mm-hmm. So I get it. And listening to this, it completely fits in with a manic episode. It completely fits in with fits of anxiety depression like it, it all fits like i feel like when kanye was trying to get here and he didn't quite make it there yeah earl seemed like he sat down and did it fucking effortlessly yeah. like these short songs these short thoughts these these the quick to the point and then bounce away no fucking hooks yep. because None. there's nothing pretty about this None. shit there's nothing pretty <laughs> about having anxiety and flipping out like that's what makes this album so interesting to me for me i just thought that danny brown did it more creatively in my opinion, for us the soundscape of it. Because like you said, mm. it's a lot of lo-fi in this. Not saying that the beats are bad, but this sounds like an acid trip. It sounds like what you think an acid exactly. trip. Right, 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 exactly. So it sounds like what I would what but I this would is think. what an acid trip to me. Okay, really so that's the like difference. Which is why you right. think it was creative, done creative, because you was like, okay, damn, yeah. I, don't, I don't experience that. Well, I don't know right. anybody that experiences it, but, but it makes, right. you, feel like it you, makes you feel like exactly. you are with that. No, 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 exactly. Yeah. Who, who does the shrooms, the psychedelics and stuff like that? Flatbush zombies. Oh. That, that's what it sounds like when I okay. listen to them. You know what I'm saying? I don't know anybody that does, you know, is it, it's psychedelics an actual thing? Yeah. 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 So I don't know anybody that does that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I could tell from the way they rap. It's like, okay, yeah. now I, I get it. Yeah. You know. So that's the that's the difference. With I get it. it. Okay. But you know what this is like? This is like a grape Jolly Rancher versus actually eating a grape, right? I get you. I get you what eat you're saying. A grape Jolly Rancher. It does not taste like a fucking grape. Right, right. But when you eat it, you're like, oh, this is grape. Yeah. But you can still eat a grape and be like, dog, this is what a grape is. Like I feel like when you when you listen to those albums. Mm-hmm. They sound like like what, what I you think, think, think it is. Exactly. I get you. No, I yeah, get you. Yeah. No, no, I agree. I don't think that Earl was really trying to make you feel anything. He was I just putting like himself into it. Yeah. I get you. I get you. Exactly. I get you, man. I, I, I get what you're saying. I picked up him being depressed, him being paranoid, him missing his uh missing his uh deceased father, mm-hmm. him uh you know. Uh, missing coming up with his friends and him being paranoid of being robbed by his friends like mm. it just all that I got I'm like he still does he's still doing it well and he's still taking me into his world yeah. over this type of production that I already fuck with so I'm just like oh yeah he hook line and sinker for me but like on the way was like about his his battle with 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 substance abuse yep. Yep. and when you're when you're coupling that with crippling anxiety and depression mm. it's like your brain doesn't know what to focus on yeah. And it's just like this album. Like there's so many sounds and shit that are happening. Like you don't know where to focus. You're like the first listen, you're just like, this is a whole bunch of fucking bad gumbo mm-hmm. with a whole bunch of shit that I don't understand what's going on. But when your brain starts to pick out that that's what's happening and you start like picking out certain sounds, mm-hmm. I feel like all of it just comes together so mm-hmm. nicely. That's why I kind of disagree with the whole Danny Brown thing. It's like Danny Brown's album is fucking incredible, but I think it's on, it's like different. Like this one, I don't think Danny Brown's was like a, a, a crippling anxiety, I'm depressed type of trip. Like it, it didn't seem like it was a bad acid trip. It just seemed like it was an acid trip. This one seems like you're really fucked up and you don't know how to get out of it. Cause you got acid, you got lean. You got whatever else he was fucking doing. It's like he's at a point of no return almost. Yeah. Kind of like, like the way he takes you on that trip. Like, it's like Right. Fuck. Like I said, like the yeah. fucking- I think I think the difference is like Earl sounds like the acid is taking him on like a depressed trip. Exactly. While while Danny Brown is taking him on like a crazy trip. Exactly. So yeah, that's the difference. Which is just like the yeah. line I was talking about the very first on the first song about the the mm-hmm. nobody told me I could leave. Right. Yeah. Why didn't nobody tell me I was sinking? Yeah. Like, yeah. Nobody told me I was depressed. I just yeah. thought I was high all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for him to use the word sinking, yeah. it just makes so much Damn. sense. And nobody yeah. told me I could leave. Nobody told me I could stop right. being depressed. Nobody told me I could get help because nobody was even telling me that there was anything wrong with me. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite tracks are Shattered Dreams, December 24th, uh, Give Me On The Way, The Mint. And I like Riot, the, the instrumental thing. I got uh, Cold Summer, December 24th. Uh, the band and as your car. Give me a uh, Shattered Dreams, uh, Asuka, Veins, Red Water, and the Bins. Shattered Dreams, Cold Summers, December 24, On the Way, and I'm gonna go Asuka too, why not? Earl, Mr. Sweatshirt, if you watching. Um, you know, your, your music, y- your audience, 
the people you make music for, I'm not necessarily part of that audience. However, I, I do recognize talent, and I definitely think you're talented. I think this project, man, from, from I, I didn't know you, obviously I didn't know that you made the majority of these beats be put me on game. Dope. All of the stuff that you're going through, I, I echo the sentiments of everybody here. I hope you do get help. However, I think it's amazing and extraordinary that you're able to even in your deepest, darkest places, to be able to craft music and to share that. Earl, uh, yeah, good album. It, it, you know, started off a little rough for me, um, but you know, I came around, and I think that there was a there was enough there for me to continue listening because I knew it had to be much more than what I was hearing uh, initially, especially on the on the surface level, and. Um, and just, you know, ju not for judgment, just for understanding, like what, you know, what's what's going on here. Continue to, to speak out about those sort of things. I think those things are important. And um, and while I don't, well, you know, like that you're going through the things that, that you are, um, I think it could possibly help others. I've always been a huge fan of your work from the beginning. And to see you not only, not only still be MC wise, just keep the bar up high, but as a producer, like seeing you just really change your style up and still not like trying to be corny with your style, even though I can see the influence, hear the influences on this album, your production style is, is dope. And whatever you're going through, I really hope you can get out this dark cloud that you're going through right now because you are an amazing, amazing artist. Um, like I said, I, I thank you for this album. I, I, I love the first listen. The first listen, I was like, damn. Like all the sounds you was putting, the soul, all the soul sampling you was doing on here, I was just like, Jesus Christ. Like, I didn't know you had that in you as far as a producer. So, good job, man. Good job on this album. I just hope you just get out that dark cloud. I agree with B. I think this is an amazing album. Um, I think you represented for other people that may be feeling the same way you feel very well. Um, and yeah, I definitely think that you are extremely talented and you have a voice that a lot of people need to hear. So I hope you can get the help that you need. If the help you need comes in the form of releasing it through your art in this fashion, then I think a lot of us will be better for it. But I hope you don't let your obsession with getting your feelings out of the art consume you and you don't get some professional help if you actually need it. But all that said, this is an amazing piece of work. So. Great job.